Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but don't worry, I am still safe and so is my family. Today, I bring you a late Halloween collab I did with some other artists. It was hosted by Telly Dollies on, here on YouTube and we are doing corrupted tarot cards, so basically a dark version. The card I chose was the Justice Major Arcana. The other artists are, and excuse my pronunciation, Telly E. Dollies, Lalizy, Fire Tuna Club, and Dolls Evan. I will link everyone down below. Though I am giving you now a content warning. My doll presents some gory elements and definitely has some intended political undertones. If this is not your cup of tea, you are free to skip this one. So I started this project with an already prepped and already rerouted Spectra Monster High doll. I absolutely love Spectra, I love her sculpt, it's one of my favorites, and those cheekbones are literally everything. My idea of justice for this collab was a grayscale piece. I wanted her as devoid of color as possible, so her face up was done entirely with different shades of grey. As usual, before I started, the face was prepped with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant, and then I sketched her feature before starting the shading process. As Justice is often depicted as blind, I decided to make her eyes closed. It's not a blind Justice per se, but more like one who chooses not to see what's in front of her. I do not wish to elaborate on the subject in a repaint video, but I honestly think social justice is an important topic in this day and age, and staying informed about what is happening in the world is a given in my humble opinion. Pink as one of the few pops of colors of the piece was an artistic choice I made along the line. It's a style I really love and I wanted her to reflect that. Starting on the second layer of MSC now, I decided to use a bit of brown over the grey. It was not meant to make her feel more alive, but more of an artistic choice. I personally love when uh, some grayscale pieces have like that rusty brown sepia feel to them, so I decided to go in that direction with her.
sorry for my camera's focus, I think I had it a bit too close from my workstation. I recently made a new DIY tripod for my phone, which is what I'm using to film, but I might have to work on it a little more. Meanwhile, I've also moved on the third layer of the face repaint, with pencils this time, working on refining the details. actually a white soft pastel pencil by Derwent my girlfriend gifted to me and it was definitely worth adding to my supplies. down paint to add her blackened tears, as if she cried and her makeup trailed down her cheeks. It's definitely a bit dark, but it fits the theme I think very well. Her lashes was the last thing I drew with a black pencil, but it was after the paint I used for her tears was completely dry. I glossed her lips and the tears with hard gloss varnish off camera, then I removed her hair cover so you can all see that beautiful, almost silver-like acrylic yarn I used to reroute her. I got that yarn at a dollar store in my area, and honestly, it's incredibly soft.
The yarn was not twisted or braided, so I did not have to brush it much. I only cut it the length I wanted, then rerouted it as is after removing the tin cells holding it into shape. Then I flat ironed it, and voila! I was also able to keep it very long because of that. Here, I'm just removing some MSC that has gotten into her hair by carefully scraping it off with a sharp blade. Because I feared the hair might look a bit flat, I decided to use a bit of brown on her roots to accentuate the rusty feel. I used pastels for that. And after that was done, I move on to styling. I used a flat iron to eat a metal screwdriver, and then I used that to form some curls. It works really really well, most use some metal chopsticks, but I use what I had on hand. Moving on to the doll's body. Spectra, as she is a spectre, has fading limbs. The paint on her legs was also badly scratched, so I decided to just cover it all with white paint to give me a uniform base. Her hands also have molded chains, and I decided to add them to my design. I use a mix of acrylic paint and water, working in layers to build opacity while avoiding to leave texture as much as it is possible. sprayed her body with some MSC and I move on to the design on her body. I want to carve words on her skin, as if they were done with a knife, leaving bruises and wounds. This is the gory bit of this repaint. I chose the following words, justice on her collarbone, acceptance and inclusivity on her forearms, equality and peace on her thigh, and fairness on her calf. After placing the words where I wanted them to be on her body, I started shading her, using the same grays as on her face, but I would also add some pink, blue and purple to make her look bruised. So this is the result. I used a bit of paint to make the words stand out a bit more. This definitely looks a bit painful, but I think this is a powerful way of conveying the theme behind the piece. I decided then that I wanted wings. Making her an angel of some sort I think fits the theme well, but also my artistic style. I made them following a tutorial by Akame Rukawai that I will link down below. Basically, I drew the wings 
made an armature out of metal for them, and then I covered everything with fabric. I glued it first, but then I secured it with stitches before gluing on the feathers. The tutorial will show you better, I think. Sadly, Amaki Rikawai doesn't seem to make videos anymore, which is a shame, really. She still has a lot of nice videos up, some of them are excellent tutorials as well. I just really hope that she is well and safe. These are my wings. Not bad, not bad, but I might try to perfect the technique a bit more next time. To dress justice, I decided to go the simple way and I cut a simple shape of white fabric and hemmed a single armhole and the top. I intended to wrap that around her body and stitch it in place. Of course, I had to do my best to distress this as much as possible, using an artist's knife, scissors and anything I had really. A stretchy fabric might not have been the best idea though. multiple pouches of black tea in boiling water with some salt to achieve this effect. Then I went in with paint to add a bit more dimension. I selected those monster high shoes for her, wanting to repaint them white with black soles. After putting the shoes on her body though, I found them to be looking way too big and chunky, so I cut the top part off carefully. I also added more chains to add to those molded on her hands. It was giving me a bit of a freed captive feel, which again I think works well with the theme symbolically. After that was done, I finally stitched a ragtag dress on. around her waist was a last minute addition. I stitched it to make sure it would stay in place. To place her wings on, I cut a small slit in her back with my artist's knife, very slowly and carefully. Then I used two part epoxy glue to attach the wings directly. I made sure to glue them directly on the fold where the two wings were joined together. You can see it a bit, but I actually made a small hot glue bridge on the fold to make it stick out more. I wanted to let the wings breathe so I could use the armature inside to pose them if I needed to. Then after that I was still not done. I wanted to give her scales and a sword. I made those using Warblad thermoplastic and a heat gun.
Here are the results of the accessories once painted with acrylic and protected with matte mod podge. And these were the two last details I worked on this doll, making her finally completed. What did you think of Justice? She was more of a personal piece this time for sure. If you have any thoughts, please leave them down below and I will answer to all your comments the best I can. In the meantime, see you in the next one!